My campaign against drug will not stop until the end of my term, until the last pusher and the last drug lord are... <laughs> I, I, uh, please state uh, your Rodrigo name. Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Duterte is a strong man, and so the appeal of a leader like Duterte is somebody who comes along and says, you know, we have problems with order, we have drugs, um, I'm the person who can deal with it, really has done remarkably little. He promised to crack down on drugs, and while there were some high-profile dealers who were killed, a couple of uh, political leaders, the primary victims were the poorest of the poor. Ito po si Aljon, anak ko po, yung ano nang December 20, yung natukhang. Parang nasakta na rin ako sa pangako niya na tutulong siya sa mahirap. Eh lalo tuloy kami naghirap dahil nakandawala yung mga anak namin eh. Hey, bilis! Bilis! Tatlong bahala akong nagtatabaho dito sa Ponerabe Arosebio. Oo, oh, support ako sa anti-dog campaign na yan. Kasi, May mga kapatid ako ng mga babae, siyempre. Pre, le, uh, lebre silang sa gabi, lebre sila akong magpasyal. Siyempre, wala silang pinapakaka na may mangyari. Siyempre, naawa ka rin sa kanila. Pero, minsan yung iba, pasaway din. Yun, sinabi na minto na sila. Ayaw pa rin nila. Pinoto ko si Duterte. Yung sinabi niya na change is coming. I think that, you know, as much as there is a mainstream media in the United States that says, oh, this guy is insipid and he's vulgar and look at what he said about Obama and all of these things, the fact is that a whole bunch of people in the Philippines feel like the system wasn't working for them and they've been very supportive of this guy. What the West and the international community tend to get wrong about Duterte is not understanding the context in which he came to power. One should not romanticize the Philippines' electoral democracy over the last 30 years. It was established uh, in 1986 after the overthrow of a dictator, Ferdinand de Marcos. And there was a lot of celebration of people power around the world, and there were these colorful images of people standing in front of tanks, nuns, and young people giving flowers to soldiers, and it seemed all very harmonious. But the reality was very different. People Power succeeded in restoring electoral democracy, it succeeded in restoring competitive elections, and it ultimately succeeded in getting the Philippines out of a terrible economic crisis, which was caused by the failures of the Marcos dictatorship. That said, People Power failed to create strong institutions, failed to deal with the issue of corruption and crime on the whole, it failed to seriously dent poverty, it failed to create a sense that, you know, people were really being empowered. And Duterte is very much someone who's taken advantage of that disappointment. Do I really believe that the average poor Filipino thought that they were going to make a lot more money under Duterte? Probably not. But did they think that this was a guy that was more likely to be interested and understanding the plight that they have? I think the answer to that is yes. Akit ka muna. Tapos hindi mo. Dali mo na rin pati. Nung pagsabi po na panalo si Duterte, buong nabotas po, masaya po sa kanya. Binuto ko po si Pangulong Duterte dahil nangako po siya sa aming mahirap, na tutulong siya sa aming mahirap. Na ano na ako sa mga anak ko, na kung mag man ngayon, na siya pa rin, hindi na ako buboto. Yung ginawa niya ngayon sa mga tao, tsaka yung ginawa ni Marcos nung araw, Duterte is an admirer of Marcos and, and says some of the things about, you know, the need for political order over democracy that 
remind a lot of observers of Marcos. I think that the bigger question is whether we have a situation of creeping authoritarianism. We still have a free press there, but there's increasing concern because, of course, people are being killed in an extrajudicial fashion. And now we have martial law in Mindanao. There's also the worry that he will, in fact, just declare martial law for the country as a whole. There are some constitutional safeguards set up after Marcos fell to keep this from happening. But unfortunately, the courts have not been effective in stopping Duterte. They've been very timid. There's very little opposition in the Congress, and there are a few groups speaking out in civil society, but their uh, opposition has been muted. So there, there are very few checks on Duterte, and if he wants to push further towards uh, martial law for the country as a whole, there seems to be very little that would stop him.